Congratulations, you made it. Last new lesson of the year. So again, like I said yesterday, next week we're going to be focusing on reviewing, making sure that we're ready for that final. So for today, let's go ahead and get through, get into this last lesson, 10.7, which is working with special segments in a circle. So this is going to be somewhat similar to what we did yesterday, working with those different chords and secants and different portions of the circle, except today, instead of working with finding angle measures, we're going to be working with finding segment measures, so the length of different segments. So again, we're going to start with segments that intersect inside a circle. So if two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the measures of the chords are equal. So in this case, we have two chords. This one is cut up to segment A and B. This one is separated into segments C and D. So we can say that A times B, the two segments of one chord, are equal to the product when we multiply the segments of the other chord. So A times B would be equal to C times D. So let's go ahead and get right into some examples here. Find x to the nearest tenth. So in this case, again, we multiply the two segments that each chord is multiplied into. So in this case, 2 times x would give us 2x, and it's going to be equal to 3 times 6, which is 18. So then we divide both sides by 2, and we find that x is equal to 9. Now, number 2. Not quite as straightforward, quite as simple. What I need to do here is I need to figure out, I know that the radius of the circle is equal to 10. So that means this radius here will also be equal to 10, but I've got a portion of it right there that's 2. So that means this remaining portion is going to be 8 units, which tells me that this entire portion, this entire segment of this chord will be 18. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x times x, the two portions of that chord, so x squared is equal to the two portions of this other chord, which is 2 times 18, which gives me 36. Then I'm going to take the square root of each side to get rid of my squared, and x equals 6. Number 3, 6 times x, so 6x equals 8 times 8, which is 64. Then again, they want the answer to the nearest tenth, so 64 divided by 6 would give me a solution of 10.7. Number 4, on this one we have x times x plus 7 is equal to 3 times 6, which is 18. I distribute my x, it gives me x squared plus 7x equals 18. Now, since I have an x squared value, in order to solve this, I need to get everything to one side of the equals sign, and I need to factor it. So I'm going to subtract my 18 over, which gives me x squared plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. Now I need to go ahead and factor this trinomial right here. So again, in order to factor that, I can use my x method where I do a times c. In this case, a is 1, c is negative 18. So I'll have negative 18 up there, b in the bottom, which is 7. So I need to come up with two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and that add to 7. So I know it'll be a negative and a positive. And I know the positive will be larger since they add to a positive number. So in this case, I can use 9 and negative 2. So I can say that this will factor into x plus 9 times x minus 2. Then I want to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve them. 
cube, I would get x equals negative 9 and x equals 2. Now, in this case, one of these is not going to work as a solution. If I think of negative 9, if I plug that in here, that means that this segment has a length of negative 9. We can't have a negative length, so negative 9 would not work, meaning that our solution would be x equals 2. Then the other four are very similar to what we did up above. I'll actually I'll walk through number five here, and then we'll go ahead and move on. So on this one, because each of these is a diameter, that means that each side is equal to the other. So this would also be x plus 2. This would be 5. So in order to solve this one, we would say x plus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 5 times 5, which is 25. Over here, we need to FOIL. So first, x times x is x squared. Outer would give us plus 2x. Inner, plus 2x. And last would be plus 4. And it's still equal to 25. Combine our like terms x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 25. Then again, because we have x squared here, we know that we need to subtract our 25 over to get everything to one side. So x squared plus 4x minus 21 equals 0. Then again, we need to factor this. So setting up our x method, in the top, a times c, 1 times negative 21. And in the bottom is our b value, which is 4. So we need two values that multiply to negative 21 and add to 4. That would be 7 and negative 3. So this becomes x plus 7 times x minus 3 equals 0, which again, set each of these equal to 0 and solve give us x equals negative 7 and x equals 3. But again, we know we can't have a length of negative 7 plus 2, which would be negative 5. So our solution would be 3. Again, I know I'm walking through these a little bit quick, so feel free to pause, rewind, be looking at the notes as we're going over this, um, or just reach out and if I need to go over some extra examples for you, walk you through some problems, I'm more than happy to do that. So then that was where we have those segments that intersect inside a circle. Last thing here, we're going to talk about segments that intersect outside a circle. So if secants and tangents intersect outside a circle, then the two products are equal. So on this one, if two secant segments are drawn to a circle from, uh, from an exterior point, then the product of the measures of one segment, secant segment and its external secant segment, so we've got BC would be an internal secant segment, AB would be the external secant segment. So again, we are doing the product of the measures of one secant segment and its external secant segment is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its external secant segment. So what that's saying, kind of the simple way of saying that, is if you look right here, the product of this entire secant, AC, times its external portion, AB, is equal to this entire secant, AE, times its external portion, AD. Then, if a tangent segment and a secant segment are drawn to a circle from an external exterior point, then the square of the measure of the tangent is equal to the product of the measure of the secant and its external segment. So if this one was two secants, and we talked about what we do there. For this one, it's a tangent and a secant. So again, looking at our equation right here, 
we would say that the tangent squared, AB squared, is equal to the entire secant, AD, times its external portion, AC. So let's walk through some examples together and see if this makes a little bit more sense for you. On number one, we know that we have a, a tangent and a secant. So we're going to say that the tangent squared, 3.3 squared, is equal to the entire secant, which would be x plus 2.2, times the external portion, which is 2.2. So now let's go ahead and solve this. 3.3 squared would give me 10 0.89, and that's going to be equal to, if we distribute this 2.2 in, that will give us 2.2x plus 4.84. Now I'm going to subtract my 4.84 over, which gives me 6.05 equals 2.2x. Divide both sides by 2.2, and it tells me round to the nearest tenth, so 6.05 divided by 2.2 would give me a value of 2.8 for x. Let's do another one here, number three. This one, we have two secants, so we know we're going to have to set equal. Um, the entire secant multiplied by its outer segment equal to this entire segment multiplied by its outer segment. So on this one, we know it tells us that these two portions are congruent, so that means this portion is also 8. So this entire secant will be 16 times its outer segment of 8 and that's going to be equal to this entire segment, which would be 2x plus 6 times its outer portion, which is 6. And then again, let's solve from there. 16 times 8 gives me 128. Distribute my 6 in, that's going to give me 12x plus 36. If I subtract my 36 over, that gives me 92 equals 12x. Divide both sides by 12 and round to the nearest tenth. That will give me a solution of 7.7 .7 for x. Now let's go ahead and go down and take a look at number 8 here. So number 8, they give us, this one is kind of confusing because they give us some information that we don't really need to know for this problem. In this case, we don't need anything with that radius, or sorry, that line right there, or that tangent right there. All we need, we have a tangent and a secant that intersect outside the circle. Now, for our tangent, it has a length of x, so we're going to do our tangent squared, and we need to set that equal to this entire secant multiplied by its outer segment. Now, for that entire secant, we're given that this radius is 15, and we're given the outer portion is 5. If this radius is 15, that means this radius is also going to be 15, which means the entire secant will have a length of 35. So x squared equals 35 times the outer portion, which is 5. So x squared equals 175. We're going to take the square root of both sides and round it to the nearest tenth, which would give me 13.2. And then number 9 here. Again, this one is giving us some information that we don't really need to know. On this one, we can go ahead and ignore this tangent right here. So we're going to look at this tangent, which has a length of 8, 
So we're going to say 8 squared is equal to this entire secant, which very similar to this one. Since this radius is 6, this radius will also be 6. So this entire secant segment is 6 plus 6, which is 12 plus x. So x plus 12. So we would say x plus 12 times the outer portion, which is x. So this would give us 64 equals. We distribute this x in. We get x squared plus 12x. Now I want to subtract my 64 over. So that would give me x squared plus 12x minus 64 is equal to 0. And then again, we need to go ahead and factor here in order to solve. So factoring in the top, a times c, 1 times negative 64. And the bottom is b, which is 12. So again, two numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add to 12. I know it's going to be a positive and a negative, and that the positive will be larger since they add to a positive number. So those two numbers, in this case, would be 16 and negative 4. So we'd say x plus 16 times x minus 4. Solve for x in each of those which would give us negative 16 and positive 4. Again, we can't have a negative length, so we know negative 16 will not be a solution, so our answer will be 4. And that's what you guys are going to be doing today. Um, there's your assignment, pretty short one for today. This will be due on Tuesday next week. Again, next week we'll be doing some review. I'll get some review assignments out to you guys. We won't have any new lessons that you guys will need to watch, but I will be having some um, office hours on Zoom. I'll get those days and times out to you guys so that if you guys need any help with that review, any reminders on anything that we've covered this semester, you guys are more than welcome to hop on there and ask for any help that you might need.